40 days and 40 nights. This song is kind of slow. It sounds kind of a bit like a downer. Oh my gosh, is it Lent already? Yes. Yay for Lent! I love Lent! We do that song next door in the 9 o'clock service. We don't do it here, and part of me wishes that we did, just because for me, that's a signal that this special time of the church year has truly begun. And that song is kind of bum, bum, bum. But there's something about it that, to me, triggers that sense of, yes, the 40 days and 40 nights of Lent has certainly begun. In the similar manner that we will always hear from one of the gospel accounts of Jesus in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights, that's the song that triggers in me that things are about to change. Things in this time of year are different. They are special. It's basically been an endeavor of my ministry to have both the seasons of the church year and maybe Lent in particular recovered by people, not as a drudge, not as a burden, but as a gift. That this is a gift from God, passed along throughout the generations by the saints through his church to say, everything that you can do within a calendar year, we are going to set something aside for this brief period of time. This time is special, this time is unique. Of all the ways that you can be distracted day to day, of all the ways that you can fill your moments with obligations and with responsibilities that are our routine keeps us comfortable, that for 40 days and 40 nights, we're going to carve out this little chunk of time. And it's going to be special. And we're going to set some stuff down that we're accustomed to. And we're going to take some things on that we might not normally do. But we are going to do so for a purpose, for a reason. That at the end of 40 days and at the end of 40 nights, after we have prayed more than we are accustomed to doing, after we have read and meditated on Scripture more than we might do on a day-to-day -day basis, as we have taken this time to serve others, to act with mercy, to seek God's favor through our confession and repentance and turn back to Him, that as we lay things down that are, are good and that we enjoy, but we do it for this reason, that we're going to finish up better. We are going to finish up stronger. We are going to finish up more prepared than we would have otherwise. And when Easter comes and we give thanks and we celebrate and joy with the resurrection of our Lord, that joy might be full and that joy might be complete. Because we're ready. We are prepared. As Jesus himself spent 40 days and 40 nights, being hungry, being hot and dirty. 40 days and 40 nights of discipline, but also of prayer. Of hardship, but of also fellowship with the Father. To endure temptations and to do so for our sake. Out of love for the sake of the world. That God Almighty would say, I understand your life not from afar, but right here with you. I have taken on your flesh. I have taken on your lives. You know what it's like to be hot and dirty. So do I. God says, you know what it's like to be hungry and for things to be hard. So do I. You know what it's like to be tempted and come this close to failure. And God says, so do I. I do this for you. I do this out of love. And I do it for you. That's why we set aside this special time. As Jesus did, so do we. And that at the end of it, those virtues that we might find through increased study of the Bible, through increased times of prayer, of quiet, of contemplation, of increased times of, of service, of working on behalf of others, increased time of fasting, withdrawing, voluntarily setting things aside that we're comfortable with, that we enjoy, that we're used to, to say, I will rely 
not on the day-to-day -day routine. I will rely, Lord, on you. That we will conclude this time better, stronger, closer to Him. Our lives might look a little bit more like Jesus. That our, our hearts might look a little more like Jesus. That our will and our spirit would look a little more like Jesus. And I say that's a gift, that's not a burden. I say that's a blessing, not a hardship. It's real hard to keep this stuff up day to day, year to year. I get that, I understand that. And I think that's the wisdom of the church and it's the wisdom of let to say, set aside a special time. Because there's, there are things that are worth sacrificing for. There are things that are worth giving stuff up for. Things that are worth fighting for. And that's what Lent allows us to do. 40 days and 40 nights, carving out a special time to say, Lord, make me more like you. When the resurrection comes at Easter, that joy won't be, hey, it's Easter. Yeah, what do you know? Hallelujah, the Lord is risen. Let's have some eggs. <laughs> we would walk through the wilderness just as he did for our sakes just as he does out of love. And we would know, like him, when we get to the end of it, that we will be better prepared for the joy of the resurrection, better prepared for the rest of our lives. It is a particular blessing and a joy that we can welcome our scouts and our families here this Sunday. And though this might seem like an awkward Sunday, a busy Sunday, where there's lots of things going on, it's, it's the first Sunday of the season of Lent, it's the Valentine's Day, it's got Sunday, we're going to pick out, we're going to have kickball, we're going to do all these things, and it might feel like, you know, there's just sort of stuff floating around, but I think it comes together, and I think it hangs together, and I think this all fits. Because what is scouting? It's not a special time in the life of these young people, where they are willing to set some things down and take some things on. A special time within the scope of their lives where they are being invested in by others and they are watching within them virtue grow. So they might be better prepared by the time they're at the end of it for the challenges of real life. What is scouting? if not a little bit of a Linton experience. These boys and their families, they give up some time that they can be doing other things with. They come to meetings. They go out for weekends. They're even here wearing uniforms today. They don't have to do this. It might be easier or more comfortable to allow just kind of the regular flow of the week to fill their days, but they say, no, there's some things that are worth sacrificing for. Some things worth setting aside some time for. Some things worth giving up other good things because at the end, there will be a blessing. And I, will be, and I will be stronger, and I will be more ready. I will be prepared for what life has to offer, no matter what. Scouting starting with the youngest of boys in the Cubs, growing through the Boy Scouts and even Sea Scouts that we have here with us now, these older teens and sometimes young adults, but coming day after day, week after week, and they are learning and they are growing and they're practicing these skills that in and of themselves might seem kind of strange or might seem kind of odd. Why do you spend so much time tying knots? Who cares if you can build a fire? That's why the good Lord invented central heating and air. Going out in the woods? Don't you get a bad Wi-Fi signal out in the woods? But these boys give up the comfort of what they might enjoy otherwise. They give up opportunities and experiences that they might do otherwise. 
There are boys who give up sporting programs. There are boys who give up video games. There are boys who give up anything else they could be doing with this time because they and their families believe that there are some things worth sacrificing for. There are some things worth giving stuff up for, some things worth fighting for that in the end, this program with its techniques, with its practice, with its investment by others, it's going to do something inside of these boys and it's going to grow them into men. And it's going to grow them into men that other people can count on, that other people can depend upon. And in this world that desperately needs leaders time and time again, who will stand up and who will lead? It's going to be boys like this. Because scouting has changed them from the inside out. In and of itself, tying knots, building fires, camping in a tent, that may not make you a better person. But overall, this program is helping to shape them into a different kind of person. A person who is dependable. Someone who can be counted on. Someone who has worked in their den or worked with their patrol and knowing that as obstacles come together, we can overcome them. That they've spent time learning skills that they might not get otherwise, that these skills themselves are going to be of aid when they become adults. Maybe not with a tie in the knot, but maybe even just that sense of confidence. I can do this. I can help. There's someone in need. Call on me. Is that not Lent? Taking on these activities or setting others down that outside people might think are silly. Gosh, why are you wearing uniforms? No one wears neckerchiefs anymore. More Bible study, more prayer, fasting? What's the deal with fasting? Why don't we just eat something? That these skills and practices this sacrifice and this training grows godly virtue within us. That as they grow from boys to men of integrity, we too might grow through these virtues and become closer at the end to who God has built us and called us to be. To make the most of what we've been given. The gift of this life of our talents and skills so that they might be of help and aid, of blessing to others. They might glorify God because as He has gifted us, we've not buried those talents, but we have invested them back in Him. Am I talking about lead or am I talking about scouting? I'm not sure. I'm getting kind of confused because it all sort of fits together. That he's these boys learn these skills, as these boys practice these precepts, as these boys learn to depend on each other, to go out into the world, out into the wilderness, build some fires, blaze some trails, learn the skills to care for each other and themselves, that they're going to become the sort of person that others can depend on, that others can count on, that they can take this time to say, I could be using it to play games, or to play sports, but I'm going to use this time so in the end, I'm going to be a different kind of man. I'm going to use the gifts that God has given me, and I'm going to hone them and shape them. I'm going to work on them and practice them. And one day, I'm going to be able to use them as a blessing for others. And I will take this life that I have granted, and it will not be wasted, and it won't be frittered away, I won't languish with just doing good <clears throat> leisure activities, but instead will glorify God because I've taken this life and I have shaped it with the virtue that will honor Him and that will bless other people. Am I talking about scouting or am I talking about Lent? I don't know, I'm getting confused because they're, they're kind of working together here. That is why we do this. This church seems strange or weird because we're having these different practices. We're singing different songs, got different colors up. We're kind of going on and on about, oh, 40 days and 40 nights, and you can pray for, and you can uh, you know, not have chocolate, and, and you can go do these things. It's for this reason. We take the gift of this special time. It's only 40 days and 40 nights. It's like, what, like a month and a half. It's 
there and gone before you know it, a little bit like the childhood of these boys. But to say, of all the things that we could do, we choose, Lord, to try to go closer to you. We choose, Lord, to set aside things that we, we just sort of unthinkingly count on. We set them aside so that we can depend not on our stuff, not on our routine, but we can depend on you. As we set these things aside, as we take spiritual disciplines on, as we pray, as we read the scriptures, as we serve others, as we confess, as we repent, we start looking more like Jesus. We start acting more like Jesus. We start thinking and feeling more like Jesus. We get to the end of the land and, I don't know, we might just become a little more trustworthy or loyal. We might become a little more helpful or friendly. The virtues of Lent might allow us at the end to become more courteous or kind. I would hope God would allow us to use them to become more obedient and even cheerful. Perhaps even thrifty and brave. I sort of hope clean, but I kind of wait on that one. <laughs> but may God indeed use this time and allow us to become more reverent. Now, am I talking about Lent or am I talking about Scouts? I'm getting confused because they're all kind of working <coughs> together. It is God who has loved us first. Before we even ever knew to love Him then. While we are yet sinners, Scripture says, He loves us first. In this small, brief window of time, we can choose to reflect that love in gratitude back to Him. Lord, I don't want to waste my time, and I don't, wait, I don't want to waste my life. I want to look more like You. I want people to see that in my character and in my behavior with the precepts and the virtues of scouting to say, we don't want our boys to waste their lives. We want them to be men who make a difference. Men who lead. Men who serve. And men we can all count on. And this special time is when we can do it. Help us, Lord take this time brief and precious and make the most of the gifts of this life that you have blessed us with. So that as we grow up and as we grow through this life we will be prepared for whatever twists and turns this life has to offer people are in need, when people are hurt, when people are lost, where can they look? They can look to us. Because our lives, our words, our actions and our hearts will point them home. <coughs> point them to you. Am I talking about Lent or am I talking about Scouting? It doesn't really matter anymore. Because the destination is the same. It is a great and grand adventure. So use this time faithfully. Use this precious time well. There is a world that is desperately needing some scouts to lead the way and some Christians to live with godly love. May this precious time be the opportunity for God to shape us and to make us to what this world needs, who we desire to become, and who will give glory and praise to God our Father.
of this time, I would like to welcome forward some representatives from our various <coughs> scout units here at St. Stephen's. I would like to first call up our Cubmaster from Pack 106. Good morning, everyone. My name is uh, Kevin Gladberg. I'm the uh, Cub Master of Pack 106. I currently have uh, two, two children involved in scouting here. Um, Ted, we're back. He's uh, we're part of the troop right now. He just crossed over. And my son, Andrew, he's a uh, tiger. Um, but anyway, um, one of the reasons that we're here today is we're here to celebrate Scout Sunday. Now, Scout Sunday is a tradition that was started to make uh, people in houses of worship aware of scouting and to allow scouts to live out their duty to God. Each week. Um, the reason that it's held uh, this time of the year, uh, Scout, uh, Boy Scouts of America was actually founded on February, February 8th, 1940. So it was decided sometime during the mid 1940s that the Scout Sunday would be an official uh, item added to the Scout calendar and it was going to be um, celebrated on or around um, the Scout uh, family day. Anyway, if you don't know much about Cub Scouting, uh, Cub Scouting is uh, officially part of the Boy Scouts of America. Uh, it is for boys in the first through the fifth grade, which is basically seven to ten year olds. Uh, our pack, Pack 106, we meet here every week. Uh, you'll see the church is basically filled with lots of kids and uh, a lot of activity here every Monday night. Compete with uh, karate and lots of other things going on. So it's very busy here on Mondays. We basically have uh, what we call den and pack meetings each week. Uh, den meetings where all the boys work with their den leaders uh, to work on the curriculum to advance the ranks and uh, learn the basic items they need to advance. Uh, and then we have about once a month we have pack meetings which recognize the, uh, the accomplishments and uh, moving up the chain of all the boys. Uh, we are one of the biggest packs in the, uh, in the area. We have uh, more than 50 scouts and 15 registered leaders. Um, additionally, we're one of the most active packs in the area. Um, we have, uh, just last year, completed seven overnight camping trips. Uh, we participate in the Christmas parade uh, each year. Uh, I'm not sure if, if you guys have attended the Christmas parade or not, but we actually build a, uh, a large float. Most of the packs actually on that float, and we uh, proudly fly the, uh, the St. Stephen's Charter flag uh, to represent you and your church here as well. Uh, we just completed our Pinewood Derby. I'm sure a lot of you uh, are familiar with that, where the boys actually work to build their cars and race them down the tracks. That was done right here a couple weeks ago. Um, additionally, we uh, participate in service projects. Um, a number of service projects were completed recently. A Salvation Army toy, toy Drive, the SPCA Head Drive, the Christina Park Cleanup, uh, St. Stephen's Shoe Drive we participated in, DB Family Drive, Scouting for food, or we round up uh, food for needy people. Uh, we had uh, some representatives at the Police Across America where we joined with the uh, troop uh, to help honor the veterans. And we had a uh, fill the stocking drive as well. Uh, Cub Scout packs are basically uh, graded on levels of gold, silver, and bronze for achievements. It's called the Journey to Excellence. The Pack 106 has been awarded the highest level gold for the past three years. Um, but why do we do all this? One of the main reasons we do all this is, um, as Father David alluded to, uh, we're trying to grow these boys into good men. And a big central tenet of scouting is character development, the basic scout law. Those who aren't familiar with, uh, with scouting may not recognize that, that Father David was actually rolling in the scout law, which we say at every meeting, um, that a scout is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, Obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. On one of our recent um, camping trips, Father David gave us a great sermon. And he summed it up pretty pretty well when he said that if you're following the Scout law, you are in essence following a Christian life. Um, but anyway, um, I'm not sure also if you're aware, but a couple of years ago, um, this this uh, and the troop were actually needed a charter. We lost our charter and we needed. Uh, a church or, or someone that can take us in. And uh, you and your church have graciously taken us in and allowed us the use of your facilities and been very good to us. So I wanted to take this one last uh, moment here to thank you all for uh, welcoming, welcoming us to your church. Thank you. And I believe we have the
committee chair for our Boy Scout Troop 106. My name is Rick Michaels, and I am the uh, true committee chairman for uh, Boy Scout Troop here at the church. Um, it is an honor and a privilege to be a leader here. Um, one of the biggest joys that I get out of being a scout leader is to watch the boys grow. Um, just wanted to share with you uh, a few things that we've done over the last few years as a Boy Scout Troop. Um, our troop has committed over 2,750 hours of community service. We have seven boys who have earned Eagle Scout rank this year. We have done two service projects, two Eagle Scout service projects for the church. We have 13 boys who have ranked uh, this past year from Tenderfoot through Life. We have gone and earned 60 merit badges. Uh, and we have 32 current registered boys uh, within the troop. And we have camped over 35 nights this year. Uh, on top of that, we are welcoming 12 new scouts to the troop that are <coughs> transferring over from uh, the Cub Scout pack. So we have a very, very active group of boys, a very active group of adult leaders, and I'm extremely proud to be involved and to watch these boys grow. Thank you so much, and we encourage uh, any questions or any involvement you might have. Thank you.